Earth Echo International is a nonprofit organization that believes youth have the power to change our planet. We have co-founder Philippe Cousteau here, along with our Echo Challenge winner from 2020, Harper Fortag. Thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, thanks so much, Rudy, for having us. Uh, Philippe, let's go ahead and start with you. Do we have a new challenge for teens, 13 to 16? Talk a little bit about this age group and what this challenge is all about. Thanks, Rudy. You know, uh, so about 15 years ago, I founded Earth Echo International. We're a leading global ocean education and youth leadership organization, very much inspired by my grandfather, Jacques Cousteau's focus on education and drilling into me the importance of youth and education to build, you know, a durable environmental movement. And four years, about five years ago, we announced and launched the Our Echo Challenge. So this is our fourth year of, of the program. Uh, and it is a national STEM competition for 13 to 16 year olds, which is a critical age group. Um, to engage in solving problems, environmental and biodiversity related problems in their communities. And um, the, the competition we launched, the applications are open until April 26th. And so we're right in the thick of, of, of the, the competition launch period right now. We're accepting applications from teams across the country. And that's what we're here to, to kind of share. Harper, you won the, the competition in 2020. Tell me a little bit about how that's changed your life, maybe your studies, your friends, and you know, maybe the, the field that you're uh, planning to go into. Yeah, so I led Team Superplants in the very first 2020 Our Echo Challenge. We were among the winners and received a $5,000 grant to implement the project. And over the past four years, um, the project has grown into Project Superplants, an entirely youth-led organization that educates, mobilizes, and inspires students to reduce CO2 emissions. We run interactive climate modules in schools around the San Francisco Bay Area. We started as a team of three, and now we're a team of 30 high schoolers who have reached over 2,000 students and grown 22,000 super plants. And what's most exciting is really to see the ripple effect that our project has. It's exciting to watch as teammates take other activist steps in our community. We have one teammate who's organizing an annual youth climate summit and another who's creating environment related films. The project has inspired me to help launch an electric vehicle charging pilot in San Francisco. Um, so it's really been a launching point for ongoing activism. That, that is amazing. Congratulations on, on all your efforts and everything that's been taking place uh, since the win. Thank you. <laughs> Philippe, let's talk a little bit about, about the Midwest, because obviously sometimes, you know, with your grandfather's work, we talk about, you know, the, the oceans and, you know, if you're out on the coast, but in the Midwest, we have rivers, we have lakes, you know, there's a lot of things that people can do here, um, you know, within our city of Chicago, or within our state or, with, you know, within the Midwest. Well, you know, Rudy, I spent a lot of time in Chicago and, uh, you know, over the last 15 years, Earth Echo has worked with over 2 million young people all over the world, including in the Midwest. And, you know, we've seen like the stories that Harper was sharing about, about how building community, getting young people together. There's such a desire for this across the country, uh, particularly amongst young people. There's so much anxiety about these issues. And even in a place like Chicago, I've spent a lot of time around the Great Lakes. We have lots of exciting programs. We'll actually be probably in Chicago later uh, this spring, launching a program all around marine plastics, um, which is a, you know as much of a problem in the Great Lakes as it is in the ocean. And the idea that, it, that that young people have so much anxiety around these environmental issues, I'm sure you saw the news, Rudy, that, you know, the United States has dropped out of the top 20 happiest countries in the world. Big part of that is driven by young people's kind of fear and anxiety around the issues that, that are facing in the world. The best way to help combat that anxiety and that fear is to give them agency and power, give them tools, get them engaged, get them outdoors, get them solving problems in, you know, with their friends and their community and help them recognize that they're not just passive participants, but they can really be active and engaged in, uh, in, in helping to make the world a better place. And that is so inspiring for us, so empowering for them, uh, no matter where you are, near the ocean, away from the ocean, Chicago, uh, anywhere. We're, we're connected to water and, and water is so important for us. Oh. Yeah, I mean, that's such an important point, because maybe under the age of 12, you still need your parents to take you places and you're still being watched and you got to wait to 18 till to your vote. But you have that window of time where you can actually make a difference uh, because you can think for yourself. You see the issues that are affecting you um, before you get into you know college life. Harper, how are you seeing that your work has been inspiring some of the other kids that hopefully, you know, people might be watching this and be inspired to uh, join this competition here uh, this spring? Yeah, we've seen that youth have a unique power to mobilize and to activate other youth. 
Um, for example, we worked with one school in Sonoma County that a few weeks after our session in their classroom decided to write letters individually to their city council members to advocate for growing super plants. So it's exciting to see that once we activate other youth, they want to continue taking action. And Philly, final thing here, as far as your grandfather goes, um, at what age did you realize the impact that you can make um, either as a kid or as a teenager uh, within these efforts? You know, I, I mean, I really growing up with my grandfather's stories, you know, he traveled all over the world. He passed away when I was about 17 years old. So I got to know him pretty well. And and hearing the stories of all the young people he was working with, the programs that he was launching everywhere from from uh, from the Midwest and, you know, all around the United States, all the way down to Antarctica. So he was truly a global uh, citizen and and had programs everywhere. But it was really listening to the stories of young people and then engaging in my own classrooms and my own schools around these types of issues and seeing how it coalesced and brought together in a really positive way and built community and that young people care about this kind of stuff and and um, um, and want to take action and oftentimes just lack maybe the tools or knowledge or, or resources. You know, we have a, a, a grants of a thousand, twenty five hundred and five thousand dollars for the for the top three winners of the competition so that young people can actually in, you know, engage and implement their programs. It's not just a theoretical program. It's something that really is designed to help them kickstart their work uh, and build that community. As you saw with Harper, it's, you know, the, the impact can be enormous um, that when, when you enable and, and empower these young people. And you see how much wonderful work has been done just the last couple of years and who knows how big it's going to, it's going to grow. Uh, thank exactly. you both so much. You. It's, it's true. It's, it's, <laughs> it's exciting. Both. It is, it is extremely exciting. You have until uh, April 26th to go ahead and join this competition. Our echochallenge.org is where you can go ahead and find more information. Philippe Harper, thank you both so much for your time today. Ah, Thank you, Rudy. Thank you. Thank you.